Since July 23, 2001, PayPal stock has fallen from $308.53 a share to yesterday's close at $63.19. That's a 79% drop in value for a company that pays no dividends. Does this make PayPal a dog or a real lousy investment? Or does it mean this is a great time to be buying PayPal? Let's watch this video and find out. Hello, everybody. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, a.k.a. Mr. Valuation. You know, normally, I, I like to write about dividend growth stocks, but I'm often asked about growth stock investing. And frankly, for most of my career, I invested in growth stocks. But just like being a value investor, I only want to be a GARP growth stock investor. GARP stands for growth at a reasonable price. Okay, it's one thing to identify the best growth stocks. It's another thing to be able to identify them when they're attractively valued. And by the way, that's a rarity when it comes to growth stocks. Typically, the market prices them at high premiums. But here's the problem. When people are looking at stocks, what most people have is a picture like this. Let's go ahead and move to fast graphs. All they see is price only. This is PayPal's price going back to July 10th of 2015. And you can see that the price had steadily risen from a low of 37 or $8 a share to a high of you know, over $310 a share in 2021. But then from this high of $310 a share, I'm going to do 308 here, the stock has fallen since July 23rd by over 79% over this two-year period. Now, when you look at this from a standpoint of stock price, it's very easy to say, you know, geez, this stock has lost you a lot of money. Even if you looked back longer, like you looked at a five-year period, okay, PayPal was trading at 86. It's now trading at 63. That's a minus 6.56% annualized rate of return over roughly the last five years. What a dog. Now, most people only see PayPal like this or any stock. They just see price and they make all their decisions based on what the price is going. I've often said that measuring performance without simultaneously measuring valuation is a job half done. This is how I see a company like PayPal. I see it based only on the performance of the company. And here I'm looking at adjusted operating earnings. Okay, now what I see is if I go back to the 10-year the graph here, I see that PayPal has grown earnings at 17.21% on average. They grew earnings by 16% in 2016, followed by 27% in 17 and 18, followed by 28% growth in 2019, 25% growth in 2020, 19% growth in 2021, and then a minus 10% growth in 2022. But I want to point out 2022, even though it was a down year, was the second most profitable year in the company's history. And it's expected to grow to by 20% for this fiscal year, which ends in December, then followed by 14% and 11%. So now when you bring stock price into the equation, I here's how I see PayPal. I see PayPal as being priced at a premium for most of this time. And then I see the valuation getting absolutely crazy, which then means as a value investor, I saw PayPal as being extremely vulnerable at those high levels. The company doesn't pay a dividend. It was trading at an extremely high price. Now, we had a down year and we had some, you know, weaker quarters that happened over here. And the price fell, as I already showed you, over 79%. But notice the stock for the first time in its history as a public company, it is now trading below the, the orange line. Now, typically, the market has generally applied a premium valuation. They put a premium valuation of over 34 times earnings normally. That's this blue line here. Now, this is a valuation reference. I want you to understand you're looking at a line here that represents 34 times earnings rounded. Okay, and you can see there were a lot of times where the stock traded at a higher value than that. There were some times when it traded at a lower value, but it was still in the 20s times earnings. This orange line on this graph is the P equals growth rate or 17.21 times earnings. And now we see that the blended PE today is 13.67, gives it an earnings yield of over 7%, which I like. The company's A-rated only has 36% debt. And for all you debt 
you know, freaks out there. They're always worried about debt, even though we've had some of the lowest interest rates in history and companies could borrow money cheaply. And that's why they took on a lot of debt. PayPal has really a very strong balance sheet with only 35% debt. The point is the stock is now trading below its intrinsic value. Now, there was a lot of hoo-ha. The stock fell 8 or 10% the other day, just um, I think it was about a week ago, and everybody was all freaked out. But this is what it looks like on a fast graph. It fell from here to here. This little drop you see right here is all that happened. And to me, this makes no change in you know the investment opportunity of PayPal during this period of time. But the point is, now for the first time in its history, the stock is trading at growth at a reasonable price. Okay, if I look at the forecasting calculator here, what I see is PayPal's followed by 44 analysts. The consensus is for almost 20% growth this year, cumulative, 14% growth next year, followed by 11.9% growth. All right, so what we've got here is a pure growth stock a company that's actually growing. All right, now the point is they had a earnings report and the stock tumbled this 8% right here that we saw. Earnings were actually in line. Okay, they, it was, you know, the company, um, their non-GAAP projection of 495 versus 494 consensus. But they actually beat, you know, consensus by a penny. But they did have revenue or the active accounts, which is what everybody focused on, went from 431 million down from 433 million at the previous quarter. But that's minuscule. So my point is this, and this is what I really want to you know, help you understand. The company's earnings dropped roughly 10% in 2022, okay, which created this precipitous drop in the value of the stock. It had already been falling, but it fell just in 2022. The stock fell by an average of over 56%. So it continued to tumble from its peak. So we had a 10% drop in earnings and we had a 55 or 60% drop in value. That that is an extreme overreaction under nor if the company was normally valued, but what I want you to understand is when the stock was trading at these insane valuations, 70 times earnings, 60 times earnings, even here at 40 times earnings, those were insane valuations for a company growing at 17% a year. A 17 multiple is realistic, which is what the orange line on this graph suggests. Now, you know, the company also has had a very excellent scorecard. And let's real quickly look at the scorecard graph here. They have missed earnings by 14% when the analysts were making a one year forward and by 20% going forward. But generally speaking, most of the time, analysts have got this company right. Now, I want to point out again, we've got 44 analysts, all right? And the estimates for this company in 2023 have been rising from 476 six months ago to now the current 495. Last year, the earnings estimates went from 386 to 393 to 408, and they came in at 413. So, you know, they actually beat estimates again. Estimates for 2024 have risen from 554 to 567, which is what the current is. That would be a 14% growth rate. The company is expected to grow by 15% a year going forward, and the long-term growth is expected to be approximately 15% as well. That would make this a very exciting, interesting, double-digit growth stock at a reasonable price investment. Now, I also want to make a couple of other points. I'm not suggesting that this is as low as PayPal can go, but I am suggesting that PayPal has now become a reasonably priced stock, perhaps for the first time in its storied history. Now, when you look at you know other sources of research out there, for example, if I went into the external links here and went into Morningstar, Morningstar gives this company a five-star rating, number one. They give it a fair value of $135. Its last close, of course, was $63.19, and their five-star price is $81. So this is a huge margin of safety from Morningstar's perspective of a, a stock that's, you know, has a five-star buy rating at $81. You can buy at $63 and a fair value at $135. Now, that fair value estimate that they give here is based on something like 23 times earnings for operating results here, okay? And this is 17 times earnings. Our goal would be, I would see this as a fair value of about $85 a share, 
that you can buy at 63. All right. You know, we're looking at Morningstar, looking at valuations up in here somewhere as the fair value. But I think you're looking at a time when PayPal, if you're a growth stock investor with an extremely high quality credit rating, a very minimal amount of debt and some real strong growth potential is a buy. So now let's quickly look at this stock from different metrics through the lens of Fastgrass. Operating earnings, it looks very attractive. If I go to operating cash flow, the company has also grown cash flow by 14%, and it's trading below a, a 15 times cash flow. The normal price to cash flow has been 25, as you can see. But I want to clarify things. This number is a number that's mathematically derived as the average price that the market has applied over this time frame. But there are times when it has traded below that, and there's, of course, this two-year period roughly here where it traded at significantly premium valuations to that. The premium valuations that this stock had made it vulnerable to something like a 6% drop in operating cash flow in 2022. I want to really emphasize that. From a free cash flow point of view, PayPal also looks interesting and, and, and inexpensive at these prices or trading just below its fair value with a operating cash flow growth of 17%. If I look at other metrics like EBITDA, I get the same thing. It looks extremely undervalued based on a normal price to EBITDA of 31. You know, you can now buy it at a price to EBITDA of 11. And I think this is a real important factor in PayPal. If you look at its price to sales, it's normally traded around six and a half times sales. Okay, but there was a time when it only traded at four or five times sales. I believe it's about a four times sales or maybe five times sales stock. Okay, so I can go here into my settings box on FastGraph and I'm going to put in, I'm going to be conservative and put 4.5 times sales as what I would think a company growing at this rate would be worth. And that puts this purple line on the graph. And you can see that PayPal is clearly trading at a discount to that. There's your margin of safety based on, on sales. Let me go ahead and get rid of that now. So I look at this company every way but sideways, and I see it being extremely undervalued based on sales. I see it being reasonably priced or slightly undervalued based on earnings and cash flows. And I think now's the time to buy it. And the beauty of it is with a tool like FastGrass, I can look at these projections. If the stock traded at 15 times earnings on 2025 earnings forecast of 6.32, that would make the stock a $96 stock and that would be a 19.07% rate of return from here. If the stock traded in the 20s, you know, I don't even have 24 on here, but this is Morningstar's number, you're looking at a 41% number. So now the conservative number that Morningstar gave was about 15 times earnings. The regressive number was the 24 times earnings. And even if you looked at 17 or 18 times earnings, you know, this gives you a chance to make some really good money going in the future. But I do also want to point one final thing out. This is a growth stock. And the, one of the problems with growth stock investing is everything is based on price. Everybody loved PayPal here. Everybody hates PayPal now. And that's exactly the opposite. The secret of making money in stocks is to buy low and sell high. It doesn't make sense to buy high and then sell low, like a lot of people obviously have done here, unfortunately. So I think PayPal is a very interesting growth stock right now. And I think if you're going to start, you know, looking for growth, this would be a great time to start building a position. Or perhaps you would just want to start watching it here because the stock is still under a little pressure. And so, you know, it's down another 0.49 cents today or 0.78 percent. So, you know, this would be a time to start putting PayPal on your watch list. If you're a growth stock investor and looking for, you know, capital appreciation in the 15 to 20 percent range, I think that can be pretty safely done with PayPal. Morningstar has a very interesting research report. Zax has a very interesting research report. And you can go into other sites, even like Seeking Alpha. And, you know, Seeking Alpha now just came up with an article where PayPal isn't getting, you know, the market isn't getting the bigger picture. They rated a strong buy. I think it's now time to be taking a hard look at PayPal. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs. Very happy to have you come and watch this growth stock video, something a little bit different for me now. I think PayPal is great. If you like the video, give me a like, ring the bell, and take a look at subscribing to Fast Graphs because what Fast Graphs was able to do here for you as you went through this portfolio 
is instantly see this company from the perspective of valuation as well as price rather than just price alone. Thanks for watching and talk to you again real soon.